Number 35. Assuming bicycle tires are perfectly flexible and support the weight of bicycle and rider by pressure alone, calculate the total area of the tires in contact with the ground. The bicycle plus rider has a mass of 80 kilograms and the gauge pressure in the tires is 3.5 times 10 to the 5 pascal. All right, so here we have our bicycle that looks like, uh, I guess, an oversized skateboard. What are you going to do? And uh, what we have here is the bicycle will have two tires and the total mass of the whole system was 80 kilograms, right? Uh, however, though, each of the tires will be supporting only half, right, of the total mass, okay? Uh, why? Because the bike is symmetrical. We're going to assume that, you know, the bicycle rider is right in the middle. Even if not, we should still come up with similar uh, results. Now, um, so basically what I did was I divided the mass by half to show that the uh, mass is, you know, acting on each tire. Um, and now what's happening is we have the tire here articulating with the ground, right? There's going to be a certain area here on the bottom of these two tires, um, such that will support the uh, force that's pointing down, all right, via the pressure. Now, we also know that the gauge pressure inside of the tire is going to be 3.5, inside of each tire is 3.5 times 10 to the 5 uh, Pascal, and they said that that's the gauge pressure, all right? So you consider that this is the uh, unbalanced pressure, okay? You don't have to consider the atmospheric pressure now or anything like that. Anytime they tell you gauge pressure, uh, just, you know, there, there's nothing really... I mean, I'm assuming the problem is straightforward. There might be other information, but generally speaking, um, you don't have to consider outside pressures on the tire as well. Now, um, so if we're if we're thinking about finding the area, right, we're given pressure and masses, we're probably going to be using this formula over here on the right-hand side. So pressure will be equal to the force divided by the area over which that force is applied. So it's easy to see the pressure, right, in this, in this problem, okay? Um, we realize that each tire has a certain pressure value, right? And each tire will have about 3.5 times 10 to the 5 uh, Pascal. So what we can do is we can plug that in for our pressure if we'd like. Okay. So um, why don't we now, yeah, why don't we do that for, uh, actually, I apologize. Let's just solve for area first. So area will be equal to the force applied divided by the pressure. Okay. Now, the thing here is that since there are two tires, right, we can look at one system in singular and then multiply our answer by two or we could start talking about that here's an a and here's an a right and we can take the whole system into account which would then be right 2a and we can do those type of substitutions um, there's a couple of ways to approach this problem what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at one tire in particular and then i'm going to realize that this area was only the area of half the total system right because again, we have another tire over here. So whatever area I find for this tire alone, I'm gonna to have to multiply my answer by two to get the total, okay? Um, so let's just look at this tire, like I said, as a, singular, as a singular system here. Let me make that a little nicer, okay? Now the area then, okay, will be equal to the force applied on this particular tire, which we can find from the mass, right? We know that force is equal to mg. And then that's still divided by then the gauge pressure. So now I can start plugging in my values, right? So now I can say that the mass uh, was 40 kilograms. Gravity is going to be 9.8. The pressure inside of this tire was 3.50 times 10 to the fifth. And now what I can do is I can just say that the, you know, I can just manipulate this equation slightly and say that the total area now, because remember, I know that this is the area of just the one tire, the total area, we just have to take this value and then multiply it by two. So I can kind of just make this little equation right here. In any case, we can now just plug this on into the calculator and now we found the total area. So we have 40 times 9.8 uh, times two, all divided by 3.5 times 10 to the five. And we get a value here. Remember, this is gonna be in meters. We're using standard units. So this is 0 0.002244224 square meters. Okay, and that is the answer. All right, that is the answer here. So um, what you'll actually realize, and there's many ways to approach this problem, e you didn't even have to break this problem up into two tires like I did. You could have just, oops, you could have just represented this problem as a single tire, all right, with a total mass pointing down of uh, 80 kilograms, 
right? Find the force here. Realize that we have the gauge, you know, pressure on inside. Oh, that, that doesn't look like a tire. Um, realize that we have the gauge pressure inside of this tire was the same, right? It's going to be uh, 3.5 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. And then all we need to do is just solve again for the area and we're going to get our, our the same answer, okay? So there's a couple of ways to have approached this problem. In any case, not to belabor the point, but this is an answer. Uh, these It doesn't tell me what units I need, so I can definitely leave it in these units of meters squared. If you gotta do a conversion to centimeters squared or anything like that, you know, uh, I, I think you guys should be able to, uh, to do that. Um, yeah, problem over. Thanks guys for tuning in. All right, please remember to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Take care.